Lee Weston? Yes, sir, that's me. Registered package. Sign here. I see it. Come. Oh, God. Mom? Yes? It's here. What? What's all the excitement, son? It's here. I heard you the first time. What's here? My correspondence course. No, you're studying something, are you? I'll say. Where do I sign for it, Mr. Postman? Right there. Number 1953. What are you taking up? Dance lesson? I should say not. I'm going to learn to be a private investigator. No, what? A detective. It's all here in this package. How to become a private investigator in ten easy lessons. No, I suppose you'll get a badge and everything. Sure, when I finish the course. Today's radio play, Private Investigator, is based on a most interesting story taken from the pages of next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. The magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. All right, all right. I'm coming. I'm on the way, third floor. Keep your shirt on. Say, what is this, a game? Going down? Oh, of course I am going down. Didn't you see I was pushing the down button? Watch your step, please. This hotel has only 17 stories, and yet there's never a car going down when I am. Or going up when I want up. Where do you spend all your time, young man? Main floor. Yeah, I thought so. Of all the lack of physical terrorists. The old crab. Randy, what's the lesson for today? Fingerprints? No, it's... Oh, gee, Mabel, you don't take my course serious. Well, not as serious as you do, at any rate. You got a customer. Oh, yeah? Well, let the next car get it. I haven't had a chance to do any studying all morning. Say, if I ran my candy counter the way you do your elevator, boss would fire me. Well, I wouldn't care. What? Oh, I don't mean if he fired you, Mabel. Gosh, that would be too bad. But I mean if he was to fire me. I'm almost ready for the plain clothes squad. Are we, Sandy? Sure. You know, it ain't everybody can be a detective, Mabel. There's certain requirements you have to measure up to. What are they? Well, the course tells you right here in the first lesson. Here. It says, the applicant for an investigating officer must possess youthful vigor, mental and physical alertness, and robust good health. That's you all right, Andy. Yeah. And then it says, he must exercise tact in all cases, be ready to risk his health, or if need be, his life, in the line of his professional encounters with fatigue, hardship, disease, or desperate criminals. Heaven, it sounds terribly dangerous, Andy. Well, the life of a private investigator is in the life of ease. It takes a man. Oh, I'm sure it does. Yes, sir, Mabel. I'm not going to be an elevator boy all my life. I'm going to amount to something. I'm sure you will, Andy. Someday. Huh. I suppose you think I couldn't solve a crime. Well... Why, most crimes break because of some tiny little observation by a detective, Mabel. Some little thing that by itself doesn't mean anything, but when linked up with something else, proves the guilt or innocence of someone. Now, I should think a detective would have to be a college man. He has so many kinds of cases. Well, that's true, Mabel. The course says here... Here... A private investigator has to solve problems relating to every branch of human knowledge. Now, how could you solve problems like that, Andy? Oh, I couldn't solve all kinds of cases right off, but I'm always trying to pick up knowledge, like which part of a shoe wears away faster, or how tall a man is by the measurement between each step in his footprint, or the difference between a knot tied by a sailor and a knot tied by a bundle wrapper in a department store, or what color stains a red... There's a chance to pick up some knowledge. Uh... See, he's pushing that buzzer to be brought downstairs. Gosh, somebody's always taking the joy out of life. Boy, hold your car. Boy, let me get away from here. Why aren't you at your counter, Miss Doyle? I'm on my way, Mr. Murray. Uh, step right in the car, Mrs. Vanderberg. Thank you. Floor, please. Top, boy. Yes, sir. I'm glad the penthouse is just what you desire, Mrs. Vanderberg. Well, it's most effective. Oh, uh, may I say something I feel I ought to say? Certainly. I've been admiring your diamond brooch. Oh, uh, this? Yes. <laughs> yes, it, it is rather nice, isn't it? Rather? It's putting it all too mildly, Mrs. Vanderbilt. Why, it's the most exquisite piece of jewelry I've ever seen. I'm no connoisseur, but I do know that must have cost a great deal. It was a gift for my late husband. Oh? I, uh, I think he paid something like $50,000 for it. And out, please. Well, here we are, Mrs. Vanderbilt. Well, uh, I was about to say, uh, don't you think you should uh, put that brooch in the office safe? Oh, goodness, no. Why should I? Well, if you are seen going in and out of the hotel with it on, some poor devil is likely to be tempted to steal it. Very well. If you're so afraid, I'll lose it in your hotel. I'll, uh, I'll engage someone to keep an eye on it. Oh, 
right, Mabel. It's fun here at the zoo on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Oh, Andy, look at that lion. Isn't he fierce looking? He's glad he's behind the bars. So am I. But believe me, Mabel, I wouldn't be afraid to face him barehanded for your sake. Honest, Andy? You bet. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you, Mabel. You, you're sweet. Well, I haven't had a chance to make good as a detective yet. But I'm going to before long. You just wait and see. Andy, I think it's fine of you to be so ambitious, but... Couldn't you pick out some other profession more in your line? Like night clerk or something? Oh, Mabel. You're good looking and have loads of personality. Well, a private investigator should have personality. That's rule free. But you're so young, Andy. Now you take Mr. Kelly. You mean the detective Mrs. Vanderberg is hired to watch out for her boots? Yeah. Well, you take him. I don't want any part of it. Is that so? Well, he's the ideal detective. Derby hat, smart black mustache. Cigar and flat feet. Believe me, he looks as though he could handle any crook that came along. Look. I bet he could. He'd hate to get a poke in the nose from him. Well, that's all he is, a great big bruiser. I tell you, Mabel, it's strange to count most in being a private investigator. Why, wait, rule five, right? Oh, right here, it says, a perfect private investigator acts with directing intelligence. He proceeds step by step from one logical conclusion to another. Precision of memory and details is the essential attribute. Not necessarily brawn, but intellect above all. <laughs> I don't know how you could find time to read rules from a book with a burglar pointing a pistol in your ribs, Andy. Mabel, a real clever investigator wouldn't be in that sort of a situation. Your sun's starting to go down. Don't you think you'd better be starting home? All right, come on. Now, wait, Andy. I'm not going to cross until the light turns green. Oh, gosh, we could have made that streetcar. You'd have hurried a little. I don't care. I won't cross the street until the policeman gives us the signal. All you women are alike. You balk when you ought to go, and you rush your head when you should fall. How do you know so much about women? Spend most of your time with your nose in that policeman's gazette. Policeman's manual. Rule book, then. An investigator should always be refreshing his memory. It's all right now. Come along, Andy. Say. Say what? That's funny. What's funny? Look at that big car with a chauffeur. Isn't that Mrs. Vanderberg? I say it is. And will you look who's with her? Some swell-looking gentleman. Why? Some swell-looking gentleman, my eye. That's your Mr. Kelly, with a silk hat instead of his derby. No wonder I didn't recognize him. Getting pretty chummy with his employer, isn't he? Did you see the way they were laughing and talking? They're never like that around the hotel. He hired him to watch your diamond boots. Where that goes, he goes. That's not a bad idea. What is it? Never mind, Mabel. You wouldn't understand anyway. You know what ideas have you got, Mr. Hawkshaw? Or are you Sherlock Holmes? Well, I don't care who I am. It's who Mr. Kelly is that bothers me. I'll buy the chocolate, Billy, and make it snappy. I got to get back on my watch up at the penthouse. Yes, Mr. Mr. Kelly. Doesn't Mrs. Vanderberg know you're down here? No. I got tired of sitting on the stairs, so I thought I'd come down, stretch my legs, and get some nourishment. We secret servicemen have to eat the same as anybody else. I take four hours on and 15 minutes out. I bet you have some exciting adventures, Mr. Kelly. Oh, once in a while we get a change. Like the time I caught three armed burglars single-handed, without a gun on me. Gee. That was nothing. My boyfriend's going to be a detective. Is that so? Well, you tell him if he wants any pointers from an old secret service man, just come to Mike and Kelly. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I will. Kelly, Kelly. Someone calling me. Oh, the manager. Uh, what's the matter? Uh, quick, uh, Mrs. Vanderberg. Yeah, what's happened? I just came down a minute ago. Uh, come along. I'll explain in the elevator. Uh, Miss Bell, uh, get a policeman. Yes, sir. Yes. Hold that car. Yes, sir, reserve, lady. Take the next car, please. Uh, top floor and hurry. Uh, what's all the fuss? Uh, the girl with the switchboard saw the penthouse light flash on, and she heard a muffled voice. Couldn't make out the words. Sounded like a cry for help. Ah, can you beat it? Nothing happens all the time I hang around, and the minute my back is turned, the old dame gets into trouble. The investigator bends all up its untiring vigilance while on a case. Rule nine. What's that? Uh, nothing, sir. Oh, I hope Mrs. Vanderbilt's boot is safe. Yeah, it'll cost you plenty if she loses that in this joint. Uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, why couldn't you have been upstairs instead of at the candy counter? And on floor, watch your step, please. Now, don't get excited, folks. Just leave everything to me. Of course you will. Yes, sir. Uh, go downstairs. Yes, sir. Uh, and more you stay here. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, no, you better come along with us. Yes, sir. Well, look, the penthouse door is open. Yeah, come on. Let's see what's happened. Uh, Mrs. Vanderberg. Mrs. Vanderberg. Oh, hurry. Hurry. She's bound as well as dead. Why, so she is. Oh, oh. 
Let's get her free. Boy, give me a hand here. Yes, sir. I'll undo this knot. Not too rough, Come on. That's it. Oh, my dear Mrs. Vanderburg, this is terrible. Terrible. Oh, how did this happen? Well, I... I was alone. I was alone when the doorbell rang. I thought it was Mr. Kelly. Yes? I opened the door. It was a strange man. He bound and gagged me. Then he found my bridge, which he was evidently after, and, and, and ran out. There, you see? Yeah. The first time I turned me back. Which way did he go? I don't know. Mr. Murray? Mr. Murray? Yes? That brute was worth $50,000. You'll have to make good on it. I took this penthouse on your insistence. Uh, you said it would be safe here. The lady's right. I only wish I'd have been here when that thief came in. So do I. What do you mean, kid? I mean, I wish I'd been here myself. You? What good would you have been? Well, I'll show you. See these handcuffs? Yeah, where'd you get them? They came as my course on how to become a private investigator in ten easy lessons. Yeah, what good are they? Well, I'll show you. If I'd have been here, I'd have snapped one bracelet around the burglar's wrist, like this. And I'd have put the other one around this bed rail here, like this. And then snapped it on his other wrist, like this. Hey, you don't think that burglar would have let you handcuff him as easy as you've handcuffed me? Well, he did. But that's what are you saying, boy? Here they are, officer. What's going on in here? He's uh, a prisoner already for you, officer. Ah, uh, the kid's crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. Uh, what's the matter with you, boy? There's your burglar, Mr. Murray. You're mistaken, my lad. That's my private detective. Oh, he's your accomplice. What? Officers, just remove Mr. Kelly's right shoe. Oh. I think you'll find that brief in the toe of it. You're crazy. I'm a detective. You can't do this to me. Come on, come on. Give me that shoe. If you're wrong, boy, this will go hard with you. I know it, sir. But I know I'm right. Mrs. Vanderberg planned on shaking you down for the price of the boot. Why, you nasty little rat. This man's no detective. He was with her yesterday in her car, all dressed up. Well. Leave the holy, here's the proof, just like the kid said. Well. Oh, Andy, I think you're wonderful. Oh, do you, Mabel? Honest. Son, how could you possibly have known this robbery was staged? Well, I noticed Mr. Kelly suddenly developed a limp in his right foot, Mr. Murray. And he walked on his heel instead of the ball of his foot. Oh. Yes. Then he told us Mrs. Vanderberg was bound. Before he even saw her. Mike. And I noticed the same knot that tied his shoes was used on the cord binding her wrist. Wonderful. Oh, you'll get a reward for this young man. Thank you, sir. And when I finish my course, will you let me be the house detective? I shouldn't be surprised. Imagine noticing the similarity of the knot. Put Come along, you two. Now, wait a minute. You can't. Oh, officer. Down. You'll have to take the next car. Mabel. I mean, Miss Bell and I are taking mine down. There's another knot I want to discuss with her. It's tied by the minister instead of by a crook. The radio display to which you have just listened was suggested by one of the many interesting stories appearing in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. The magazine distributed with all her Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. This is Wentworth announcing and turning the microphone over to your own announcer who has an interesting message for you.